We are here live at the 2023 World Gymnastics Championships in Antwerp, Belgium, and I am here to bring you all of the headlines. Hashimoto Daiki, who is the world and Olympic all-around champion, got two per country by two of his teammates, but he is still going to be competing in the all-around final, and I have all the details for you. Germany beat China in the qualification, and China may be out of team final. The U.S. has mathematically secured their spot to the 2024 Paris Olympic Games, and all-around favorite Carlos Yulo got a zero on vault, which means he is not only not going to be in the all-around final, but he is not going to be able to qualify to the Olympic Games through the all-around final. For those of you new here, my name is Kinsley, and I am the owner of Neutral Deductions, a gymnastics blog and podcast all about men's gymnastics. So the 2023 World Gymnastics Championships are the final team Olympic qualifier to the Paris Olympic Games. There are three teams who are already qualified, and that's China, Japan, and Great Britain. There are 21 teams here trying to compete for nine more spots at the Paris Olympic Games, but that's not that's all that's on the line. They are also going to be competing for spots in team and individual finals so that they can win medals and bring home glory for their country. So there are eight spots in team finals, there are 24 spots in the all-around final, and there are eight spots in each of the individual apparatus finals. Each country can have up to two athletes in each of the finals. It's a very controversial rule called two per country, which means if you are the third best gymnast in the world, but your two teammates are number one and number two, you do not get the chance to compete for a medal. It's a stupid rule and we all hate it, but yet here we are. So where are the teams after day one of qualifications? Well, leading the way is Japan as expected. Number two, USA, a little bit of a surprise. Number three, Great Britain. Number four, Germany, mind blown. They had the meat of their life. Number five, China. They absolutely imploded and we'll have all the details for you. Number six is Spain, number seven, Turkey, and number eight, Netherlands. These are the eight teams that are still in contention for making that team final. Then we have four teams who are on the bubble of making it to the Paris Olympic Games, and that's number nine, Ukraine, number 10, Brazil, number 11, Belgium, and number 12, Israel. And then unfortunately, we do have four teams that have definitely not qualified a team to the Paris Olympic Games, and that's Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Romania, and Australia. So let's get started with qualification one, which was Great Britain, Brazil, Kazakhstan, and Turkey. Turkey is trying to qualify for their very first Olympic Games, and as luck would have it, they ended up with Olympic order, which means they were starting on floor and ending on high bar. They started so strong, they had many stuck landings across the floor, and then they went on to pummel horse and they hit all of their pummel horse routines. So, so far, so good. They made it through their weakest events. Then they went to Sil Rings, which they happen to have the world champion currently on Sil Rings, Adem Sil, but Adem didn't perform up to his usual standards, and he is not only did not contribute a great score to the team, but he is also out of the Sil Rings final. Then they went to vault, where they are typically a very strong team. Adem is also a fantastic vaulter, but he chose not to try and make the vault final. So to make the vault final, you need to do two different vaults from two different families. He only chose to do one vault. He did what's called a blonic, which is a handspring double front pike. It looked beautiful in the air, but he did have a couple of stumbles on the landing. Still, it was a great score to add to the team. But parallel bars, that's where things started to go wrong. So... On parallel bars, there was something that was not set up correctly. And all of a sudden, we started seeing athletes come to the floor and coaches come to the floor and judges come to the floor and meet directors come to the floor. And we were like, oh, man, something is wrong. And you can see that they're they're fixing everything and they're trying to make sure everything's tight. Meanwhile, the athletes are getting cold. Turkey is one of the strongest teams on parallel bars. They have the 2019 world silver medalist in Amit Under. And then they have the 2021 slash 2020 Olympic Games bronze medalist in Ferhat Arijan. Both of these athletes fell on parallel bars. And so Turkey was pretty depleted here when they were counting on a really high score. They were able to make it through high bar, but at the end of the meet, Ademisil was able to speak with Olympic Channel Scott Bregman, and he all he could talk about was the parallel bars and what happened. And he said, you know, they didn't check the parallel so bar so good. That's it. And we had to wait. And you know, our P bars is it's really strong. And just individual dreams are done for the competition. And those two athletes I was just mentioning, Ahmed Ander and Ferhat Arijan. They, of course, had individual dreams of making the parallel bar final and winning more medals for their country. But they weren't able to do it because 
their bodies were cold. And of course, like your mindset, it's not perfect when you have to sit around and wait for people to fix the equipment that should have been fixed in the first place. So that's really unfortunate for them. But overall, they had a strong showing. They're still in the race for uh, making team finals and making their very first Olympic Games as a team. There is one uh, Turkish athlete that I haven't mentioned yet that I feel like needs to be owed his due, and that's Emery Dodonli. So Emery currently trains at the University of Oklahoma, but has been flying back and forth between Turkey and the U.S. trying to bond with his teammates and get to know the team. Emery did compete for Turkey at the Junior World Championships, but this is his really his first big break in the senior ranks, and he did very well for this team, and I think it's something that he should be very, very proud of. Okay, so let's move on to Great Britain. Great Britain was a little bit of a mixed bag, and for me, the star of the British team today was absolutely newcomer Harry Hepworth. He did his job, he got up, and he is in contention for a couple of event finals as well. So the other athletes, as I mentioned, they had some bobbles here and there. And overall, I would say Courtney Tolick was maybe the weakest of the team. And Courtney Tolick is a fantastic gymnast. He has a bronze medal on still rings from last year, the world championships. He won a bronze medal with the team last year. He is an extra, an exceptionally strong vaulter, but something just was not clicking today and hasn't been clicking this competition. He was not his best on his signature event on still rings. He's out of the final there. He sat both of his vaults, so he's definitely not going to be in contention for a vault final. And Great Britain's vault total was overall pretty low, and truthfully, they're one of the best best vault teams in the world championships. But you can't put all of that on Courtney Tulloch's shoulders. So there were actually four falls in their rotation. So James Hall fell first on vault. Um, then Jake Jarman went, and he fell on his Yanakura, which was a shame because the second vault he did was a Dragulescu, and it was stuck, and it was beautiful. And I wish that he would have done that first and had that count towards his all-around score. And then, like I mentioned, Courtney Tulloch had two falls on vault. So the only person who didn't fall on vault was the newcomer, Harry Hepworth, and he is in the running right now to make it into the vault final. So that's really, really exciting for him. Um, they did okay through the next couple of events through parallel bars and high bar and even floor. But then we got to pommel horse and Olympic champion Max Whitlock. He has three Olympic gold medals. He did a fantastic routine on pommel horse. He got a 15.266. He currently is leading pommel horse and is certainly going to make the pommel horse final. And to be honest, he has even more on the tank. He can really actually get up into like the 14.5 range. So look for him in the pommel horse final. That's really, really exciting for him. So just to recap, so Jake Jarman and James Hall will definitely make the all-around final. Max will definitely make the pommel horse final. And Harry Hepworth is most likely going to make the vault final. Okay, let's move on to Kazakhstan. So Kazakhstan was a team that I had previewed that I thought maybe could make it into the team final or maybe could even make it to the Olympic Games. But unfortunately, it just wasn't there. The stellar performance that they showed at the Asian, Asian Championships, they weren't able to repeat it here in Antwerp. Their best pommel horse worker, Naiman Kurbanov, he flew directly from Asian Games where he was competing in China to the world championships and he just wasn't able to put in the same performance that he was able to put in the Asian games. Basically the only gymnast who really looked quite stunning was Milad Karimi and he put in a stellar performance on high bar and floor and he's also in the running for a place in the all around and he is definitely going to qualify I would think to the Olympics through the all around finals so that's really really exciting for him but a little bit disappointing for Kazakhstan. And then let's get to, to Brazil. So Brazil made the team final last year, the world championships, but this year they came in with a much more depleted team. They didn't have their best all around gymnast in Kaya Sousa. And then a few days before the competition, Arthur Zanetti announced that he had the flu and he wasn't going to be able to compete. So then they had to bring in their alternate. And so they just weren't able to count on that really strong ring score that they had been hoping for. And they did okay. They're on the bubble to making it for Paris, but it's not nearly as strong of a showing as they would have hoped for. 
Of the individuals in this rotation, I certainly want to highlight world champion Artur Davtian, who did a very strong job. He's currently sitting in first in vault and qualification. So he does a handspring Randy vault, which is a handspring with two and a half twist. And he also does a Dragalescu. And he was the only person to break 15 with a combined average of the two vaults on vault. So he will certainly be a favorite for the gold again. He is also currently sitting in 12th in the all around. And either way, he should have a really good shot at qualifying for the Paris Olympic Games. All right, now let's get into qualifications too. So this is Japan, Belgium, Israel, and Ukraine. And we started off the podcast by talking about how Hashimoto Daiki was super country out of the all around final. So Hashimoto Daiki has been dealing with a lot of injuries this year, specifically with his back. And then at the World University Games, he ended up falling off pommel horse and getting a concussion. And we aren't sure how long he was out of training. And no one really knew how he was going to look. And he showed up during podium training and we weren't really sure what to expect because he, he just started falling on every single event. And sometimes athletes choose to do this. They just want to get used to feeling the equipment. They're not really putting their like full heart into the apparatus and trying them out. But he just looked off. And, you know, for an athlete who can go 88 and have one of the highest all around scores in the world, this was a bad day for him. And he got an 85. Well, most gymnasts dream that they can get an 85, right? Like that's still a really good score. But the problem is that two of his teammates outscored him. And the reason that two of his teammates outscored him was because one of the other Japanese athletes got injured during podium training. So Miwa Tepe was the second best all-arounder in Japan this year. Uh, He got injured and he had to be subbed in with Sugimoto Kato. So this sort of changed all who was supposed to do the all around and Kaya Kazuma ended up having to do the all around and qualifications. Well, Kaya was not supposed to vault in the original lineup. And so it just sort of has messed everything up and, you know, good for Kaya for coming out and doing such a good job in the all around performance. But as we know from Scott Bregman at the Olympic channel, who was able to get a quote from the coach, They're going to end up subbing in Hashimoto Daiki for either Chiba or Kaya. It hasn't been announced yet. So this is what the coach wrote. They said, when we decided that we would enter three gymnasts in the men's qualifications into the all around, we had a discussion with the athletes and coaches and concluded that Hashimoto would compete at the final no matter how the qualification results went. Before the qualifications, we all knew one gymnast in Hashimoto would advance to the final. Thank you so much for support through team final, all around final, apparatus finals. We all try to do our best as a team. So Hashimoto Daiki overall had an up and down meet. He went really well on high bar and he was, he broke 15 on high bar. And I'm not sure if anyone's going to be able to beat that score. I mean, having a bad day for him, he ended up third in all around. But, you know, there are certainly improvements to be made. And for Japan as a whole, there are some improvements to be made. They didn't have the strongest day, but they still ended up taking the top score. So now let's get to Ukraine. So Olympic champion Oleg Vernayev, um, he this is his first major competition in several years due to having an FIG ban. And what we've heard from several of the athletes and teammates is that he basically has not been training vault at all, and it showed. So during podium training, he was doing different vault after different vault after different vault. And I asked him in the mix zone, I was like, hey, like, which vault do you think you're going to do? And his teammates laughed and were kind of like, yeah, well, he doesn't even know which vault he's going to do. So he ended up throwing a Dragalescu, which is a handspring double front half out vault, and it didn't go great. But it was okay because two of his teammates, Igor Radivilov and Nazar Chaperni, both successfully completed two vaults and are sitting very well to make the vault final. And then things for Ukraine got even better as they went to parallel bar. Ilya Kovtun did one of the best routines he's ever done. He is currently sitting in second place with a 15.233. Oleg Vernayev, who is an Olympic champion on parallel bars, he's currently sitting in eighth. And you know, we really thought, okay, things are going to be turning around for Ukraine, but that momentum did not last as high bar was nothing short of a disaster. The highest score on high bar was a 12.7 from Nazar Chaperni. So Ilya Kovtun, who 
is currently their best. Gymnast, definitely their best. All-arounder can make finals on different events. He then goes to floor and he falls on floor. He was luckily able to get it together on pommel horse, but he is pretty far down in the all-around standings. And for someone who we had expected to be fighting for an all-around medal, this was not hopefully a day indicative of what he is going to be performing in the all-around finals should he make it there. So Ukraine was a country that I had sort of predicted might be in the running for a medal, but right now they're out of team finals and they're kind of in that bubble group of are they going to make it to the Paris Olympic Games at all? Only time will tell. So let's get to Belgium. Belgium is the home country. Belgium is a team that I have been very excited about for a long time. They have a lot of talent. They've been up and coming. They've improved their team score by over five points, which is huge to do in a year. And things started so well for them on parallel bars. They did the absolute most. They got a 42.865 as a team total. But unfortunately, that success was not to last. So the very next event, they went to high bar and Maxime Genches had a fall and Noah Quavita went the wrong way on what I think was a Takimoto full skill. And so they had a bad team showing there and Noah Quavita, who they call Quavita Airlines because he just flies so high. He is not going to be in the high bar final, which was, of course, really sad. Their other events were up and down as they go, but it really was their last event vault that did them in. The first two events went, or the first two vaults went okay. And then the last two vaults, the third gymnast ran straight off the podium this way. And the fourth gymnast ran straight off the podium that way. And unfortunately, it just didn't get them as high of a score as they were hoping. And they actually ended up two tenths of a point behind Brazil. So they are very much right now in a wait and see moment if they are going to be able to qualify a team to the Olympics. And I think that this is really important for athletes like Maxime Ginchez, who who decided not to do the all around so that their team can maximize their team score. So if Belgium makes it as a team to the Olympics, then that's great. There's five more spots or four more spots. If they don't, he has given up his best opportunity to make it to the Olympics by qualifying through the all-around. So it's a little bit of a scary place for him to be in. Belgium is not the only team that has taken the strategy. Canada, who competes in qualification two, they also have the strategy where their top all-arounder, Felix Dolce, is not doing the all-around to try and max the team score. And it's the same thing. If Canada qualifies a team, that's great because then more athletes get to go and that increases your chances of getting to go to the Olympics. But if you if Canada doesn't make it and they give up that all around spot, they lose a really great chance to qualify to the Olympic Games. So time will tell if that was a good decision or not. There were a couple of individual athletes that I wanted to highlight today, and that was reigning world champion Reese McClanahan. He hit pommel horse for a 14.933 and currently sits in third. It should definitely get him into finals. And then Olympic champion Eleftherios Petrunius of Greece, he hit his ring set for a 14.9 and he currently sits in second. Now let's get on to subdivision three. So this was USA, Australia, Romania, and Uzbekistan. So the U.S. team as a whole, they ended up starting on pommel horse, and they really had to dig themselves out of a hole. So Asher Hong went first, but he didn't do his intended dismount, which meant he got deductions, and then he also didn't get the degree of difficulty that he was hoping. He was about two tenths down based on my calculations. Then Yul Moldauer went up, who's the veteran of this team. He stepped down off the pommel, which is a half a tenth point. And then he also went for dismount and he didn't get credit for the dismount, which means he doesn't get the difficulty for the element group. And then he also doesn't get the skill. So he was supposed to be at a 6-1 difficulty and he was at a 5-2. So that was a lot to come in on. Uh, Fred Richard did a great job coming in and putting together a solid pommel horse routine. And then Koi Young, I mean, Koi knocked it out of the park. He is currently in second place behind Olympic champion Max Whitlock and ahead of world champion Reese McClanahan. So I'm really, really excited to see what he'll be able to do in the final. 
As the U.S. moved to still rings, the scores coming in were much lower than I was expecting. The still rings judging overall seemed to be on the low side at this championships, but the U.S. particularly seemed to get hammered, and I think it was probably for their holds. So I think that they need to be a little bit more in line and hold them a little bit longer just to make sure that they're getting full credit for everything. So then we had to vault and vault was really interesting because for the very first time in the history since I've been covering this sport, the U.S. put up three different guys doing two vaults, which meant three guys were eligible for the vault final. The only person who didn't put up two vaults was Fred Richard, and he's also sort of an interesting story. So at the early parts of the year during the NCAA season, he was vaulting a Kazamatsu one and a half. And then in the summer towards elite season, he switched to a handspring double front. And these two vaults have the same difficulty value. They're both a 5-2. But he was trying to upgrade the handspring double front to a handspring double front half out or a Dragulescu, which has a value of 5.6. And it just wasn't working out for him. So at this competition, as a surprise to me, he went back to a Kazumatsu one and a half and it was beautifully well executed. And I think a pretty smart decision to play it safe considering the inconsistency of the handspring double front at this time. So Paul Judah, Koi Yang, and Azure Hong all competed two vaults. And it was actually Koi Yang and Paul Judah who edged out Asher Hong, which I think was a surprise to many people as Asher Hong does come in with this huge 6-0 difficulty vault. But Koi and Paul were just a little bit cleaner and they are currently sitting in place to make the vault final. So then we went over to parallel bars and I have to say Yule was the star of this rotation. He did end up hitting his foot on the parallel bar and I guess the judges decided to give him a one-tenth sort of brush rather than a half a point interruption of rhythm, which they definitely gave him the gift in that because I think oftentimes they're they can be harsh with that deduction. And he is, I think he got 14.933. He's sitting in fourth right now. Um, but sort of like the death rotation was high bar. It was it was really an unmitigated disaster. I mean, Koi fell into Tkachev and he got a score in the 11s. Asher Hong got a score in the 12s. Paul Judah came through. He got a score in the 14s. He hit... Fred Richard, who is our best high bar worker, um, he he also fell and he ended up with a score in the 12. So this is definitely an area where the U.S. can improve in team finals. Floor was their last event and it was mostly good. Paul Judah was a little bit hoppier than he had been at nationals. And with a little bit lower difficulty, he does need to stick more to maximize that score. Fred Richard had the best score of the day with a 14.6, and he ended up getting that 14.6 after an inquiry. The U.S. actually submitted several inquiries, most of which were denied, but Fred Richards was actually accepted. So overall, the U.S., they did what they needed to do. They're sitting in second. Um, for me personally, I'm glad that they didn't give it. They're all the U.S.'s historically... Um, chosen to show their best hand in qualifications when there's no medals to be given. And the U.S. is so good that they're definitely going to make team finals. Like you don't have to be at your best and your energy in qualifications. And so I hope that there's a little bit more in the tank and that they're able to be a little bit more rested and give it their all in team final come Tuesday. Now we're going to get to Australia. So Australia chose a really interesting strategy, which was to bring only individual event specialist. Uh, and there was an all-arounder, but one who sort of has event specialties. And none of their event specialists are going to end up making the final. And this was, of course, particularly disappointing for Australia's Heath Thorpe, who is their reigning national all-around champion, who wasn't chosen for this team. And he wrote on Twitter today, today was a lot harder than I imagined. Proud of the Aussie boys who competed and the effort that they put in, but damn, that hurt a lot. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting because so many different teams choose to go with so many different strategies. So, for example, some teams choose to bring one or two all-arounders and then bring like three event or multi-event specialists to maximize team score. 
other teams choose to bring all all arounders so that if someone goes down, they have someone who can absolutely be a backup. And then Australia chose to bring basically a whole team of specialists. And but this is a little bit controversial because Australia barely outqualified New Zealand for a spot at the World Championships. And then they chose to field a team that couldn't even put up a team score. And while Australia nor New Zealand were really ever going to be very competitive at this time for a team spot at the Olympics, it sort of leaves a a bad taste in your mouth that they didn't even try. So that's why Australia has been a little bit controversial, but you know, well done to those who competed, especially I want to give a shout out to Vedan of Australia on Pommel Horse who, who went through cleanly and should be very, very proud of that routine. It just isn't going to be enough to make the team final at this or enough to make the Pommel Horse final at this time. All right. And now we get to qualification four. So qualification four, China, Germany, Netherlands, and Spain. So China is sort of known for not being great in qualifications. Like there have been times where they have qualified as low as like sixth and then come out and won in the team final. It is not unheard of. Last year they were fourth in qualifying and then they came out and won. But this qualification was like extra bad. And where they started on vault was certainly an indication of what was going to come. So Sven Wei did a cause double, which is a difficult ball. It has a 5-6 devalue. And he had a huge step to the side. And then his teammate, Su Weida, did the exact same thing. And then one of their best gymnasts, Shu Song, he got injured on vault. And then all of a sudden we see this fourth person up to vault, Lu Young, and he is definitely not known for vaulting, um, but he sort of seemed to be in this fourth spot just in case something went wrong, and so he went up, and I think he did a cause one and a half, and then he sat that, so it just like, China just sort of imploded on vault, and then they went to P-bars, which historically have been one of their strongest events. Only Shi Song was proficient. He got a 14.9, and the other two scores that we got in were a 14.2. And then we went to high bar, which was honestly a complete opportunity for comedy. I don't remember who it was at the moment, but someone did a release skill and they ended up bouncing off the high bar on their forearms and then grasping. I I, I don't even know how it happened, but needless to say, it was not a perfectly executed rotation. Then we get to floor exercise and all of a sudden Shu Song has scratched floor and we're like, oh my gosh, what happened? Did Was the injury on vault more severe than we thought it was? And then we get to uh, pommel horse. Some of the pommel horse rotation went okay. Some of it didn't. But by the end of pommel horse, they were sitting down in like ninth place, like out of team final. And all of us in press row were looking back and forth at each other like, is this is this really happening? Is China not going to make the team final? China, one of the favorites for gold. Truly, it was only still rings that saved their rotation. So they have the reigning Olympic champion in Liu Young. And he went up, he put up a great score. He is now first in the still rings final qualifications as of now. Yo Hao also put up a very strong routine. He's in third in the final right now. But so their score comes up and they're sitting in fourth place. And then all of a sudden the final routine from Germany finishes and Germany goes ahead of China. And we were like, what is happening? China is currently at risk of not making the team final, depending on that, how that team's in qualification to do, which is mind blowing. I like I cannot explain to you how crazy it would be if China does not make the team final. So that is definitely a storyline to watch out for. So I do want to give some time to the other team. So Spain started really strong with sticks on floor. Nicolo Ma- Nicolau Almer did like the routine of his life. I also felt like Reza Pata did a really good job. So Reza Pata has been struggling on floor throughout this year, but he came out and it was beautiful. It was well executed, great transitions, artistry, high difficulty tumbling, everything that you want to see in a floor routine. Things for them 
for Spain, they started to fall apart again on Vault. Man, Vault was really cruel to so many teams. So Nicol Almir, he fell. Nestor Abad fell. Um, Ray Zapata was the only athlete who was doing two vaults. Uh, his first vault went fine. His second vault, he fell. So just, you know, a mixed bag. But overall, Spain did what they came here to do. They are currently in sixth, which is about where most people expected them to be. And we'll just wait and see if they end up making team final at the end of day two. Uh, the last team I want to talk about is the Netherlands. So the Netherlands looked... I would say fair to good overall. Um, I would say a highlight overall was that Laurent de Monk hit his pommel horse set. It was quite good. It's not going to make pommel horse finals, but he absolutely did his job. Uh, Laurent didn't have a great outing on parallel bars. He ended up splitting the P bars and Jordi Hagenauer ended up sitting his to pelt. So a little bit of a mixed bag there. And then I think the saddest thing for the Netherlands was that Bart got hurt on floor. Something happened on vault and translated to floor. It seems like maybe he was having a calf cramp and wasn't going to be able to complete complete his routine. And right now they're sort of sitting in that bubble spot. And after the championships were done, I went to the mix zone and I asked Laurent, you know, like, are you going to be waiting tomorrow you're going to be checking the scores constantly or are you just going to wait till the end and see and he was like oh no I'm showing up to the competition I'm definitely going to see uh, what happens so they are going to be watching and waiting and seeing what their fate is heading into the Paris Olympic Games. Finally we have to give it's well due attention to Germany. So Germany was a team I was not expecting to do very well I thought they were a little bit depleted coming into the championships and then having one of their best gymnasts, Andy Toba, get injured on floor and not be able to compete. And they had to have Nick Klessing come in and Nick and Andy Toba have sort of different strengths. And I wasn't sure how that was going to play out. But having Andy get injured really seemed to rally the team. They seemed really excited to show what they could do. And they wanted to prove that they could do this. And that's exactly what they did. They, I, you know, when you're at the world championships, you're not able to watch every routine, especially in such a packed qualification session like this one was. But I remember just looking over and thinking like, wow, on, on high bar, they're looking so clean and they're having good landings and they're not falling apart. And then they got to pommel horse and they hit all their pommel horse routines, including Nils Dinkel, who had an exceptional routine in the mid 14s. And then, you know, like we go through the competition and all of a sudden they're at their last event and it's parallel bars and it's Lucas Dowser going up and Lucas Dowser is the reigning Olympic silver medalist and the reigning world silver medalist. And he nails his routine for a 15.3 to take the highest score of the day. And then you, all of a sudden you see Germany bump ahead of China. It's like, when is the last time that's ever happened? And it's just so exciting for them. And they're certainly going to secure a spot to the Paris Olympic Games, even though mathematically it's not official yet. I I just, I can't imagine them not being there with, with that score. So, um, you know, I was reading up on the balance beam situation, the blog that Spencer Barnes runs. And he mentioned that they were 2.5 points better than last year, which is a huge improvement. So congratulations to Germany and to all of their athletes and best of luck, whether in team final or competing at the Olympic Games. Okay, so to recap, for the team final and for the team qualifications, Japan is leading the way with a 258.228, followed by USA and Great Britain. Germany is in fourth, followed by China, Spain, and Turkey. The Netherlands sit in the final team spot at eighth, followed by Ukraine, Brazil, Belgium, and Israel. Those are people still in the running to qualify to the Paris Olympic Games. Then we have Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Romania, and Australia, who are definitely out of the running for the Paris Olympic Games. 
For the all around, we start with Chiba Kenta and Kai Kazuma of Japan. Chiba Kenta had the highest score with an 85.799 and Kai Kazuma had an 85.599. So those are the only athletes who have qualified who broke 85. We do know that one of those athletes is going to be subbed out for Hashimoto Daiki, according to the Japanese news. Jake Jarman is in third with an 84.831, followed by his teammate, James Hall. The American Fred Richard is in fifth with an 83.566, and Milad Karimi of Kazakhstan is in sixth with an 83.232. Asher Hong is in seventh, followed by Artem Dolgopyad and Adim Asil. Lucas Dalzer is in tenth, followed by Sun Wei. Twelfth is Arthur Dotfian, followed by Ilya Kovtin and Kasimir Schmidt. Lubimov of Israel is 15th, followed by Ahmed Under of Turkey. Diogo Suarez of Brazil is 17th, followed by Nestor Abad of Spain. His teammate Tiago Diallo is in 19th. Muntian, Ergashev, Teknohov, and Brendel round out the top 24 for now. Moving on to event finals, Artem Dogopiat takes the top spot in the floor final with a 15.1. Max Whitlock has the top score on Pommel Horse with a 15.266. Lou Young has the top score on Still Rings with a 15.2. Arthur Dodfian has the highest score on Vault with a 15.033. Lucas Dalzer has the highest score on Parallel Bars. And finally, Hashimoto Daiki has the highest score on High Bar. Thank you so much for tuning into our coverage today. If you would, please take a moment and like and subscribe to our channel. It really does help us out. Another way that you can help us out is to provide a PayPal donation. It does cost a lot of money to come to the World Championships and provide this coverage to you live. Even $10 helps us cover a meal while we're here. So please donate whatever you can, and I'll link my PayPal account down below in the show notes. If you have any questions for me, you can find me on Instagram at Neutral Deductions, or you can email me at NeutralDeductions at gmail.com. I'll see you next time.